to look at one or two lessons that will help us today from a man that God gave a friend. First Samuel chapter 18, and we will start with verse 1. First Samuel 18. Now when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. Say, wow. Now the question here is, what kind of things did David say that caused a person's heart to be so knit to him? We see, we will see all of it today. Amen. And so I want us to look at, it says that it was knit to it. And now let's go to verse 2. Now, then Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Wow. Then look at verse 3. We want to learn a few lessons from here. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Husband and wife, please pray this prayer today. Amen. Hmm. I said, pray this prayer today. Amen. Amen. It says, then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. Now, verse 4. And Jonathan took off. Question. I want to ask the couples, please. I want, to, I want to come on the ladies today. Say, ladies, are you there? Please wave at me if you're a lady, if you're here. Mostly I'm after the men. Wave, wave at me if you're a lady. Wave, wave. I want to see. Some of the ladies are not waving. Are you? Are you? You don't remember who you are or something? I need to know. Please, let me see. <laughs> yes, thank you. Now, it seems like it is this unwritten rule that men are supposed to give gift to women. Now, remember, I believe men, we are to love our wives as Christ loved the church. And for God so loved the world that he... So it is true. But ladies, it, don't make it think that you can't give. Amen. I sense that I need to teach someone today. Thank you. <laughs> I will be teaching, yes. See, let it be so reciprocal. Like, don't, don't, okay, question. I, 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 I won't do this because it will cause a whole lot of, uh, <laughs> I will have to. But isn't it interesting that on Valentine's Day, it seems like as if men must buy a lady's gift. Is it true? Yes. Okay. Men buy women gift. Ladies, I just want you to know it's not a law. It's a, it's a love thing. So you too, you can do the same thing. Yes. Amen. Yes. Balance it. But the reason why I'm trying to say this is that verse 4. Let's look at what Jonathan... Now, if someone says they love you and they cannot give to you, Suspect that love. Yes. Amen. Amen. Suspect that love. Because love always gives. Love gives in a way that shocks you. Amen. Amen. There, are, there are few people that I warn my daughters not to marry. An ungodly man and a stingy man. Yes. I tell you, stingy men, not only are they serious, but they are dangerous. Because when a man is stingy, he's serious. Because men by nature are supposed to be providers. So when a man is stingy to you, and you are not married yet, run. I'm telling you, they will, they will not, hear me, they will not give you love. They will not give you respect. They will not give you honor and much more money or gifts. Run for your life. 
because you are in it, it will be, it will be a hard thing. Pastor, what if I'm already in it? Stay. <laughs> if you are married already, stay. Amen. Amen. She's like, oh man. <laughs> I wish Pastor was going to say, this is my time. No, if you are married already, stay. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. But we must be givers. We must. The Bible says that this, this scripture teaches us lessons. It says, and Jonathan loved David like his own soul, that what he did is serious. He took off, number one, his robe. The robe was a symbol of his status in society. Do you remember in Genesis when the man of God gave his son the coat of many colors? It was a sign that he stands out. It was a sign that he was favored. And what Jonathan was wearing, the robe that shows that he's the next in charge to be the king. And the Bible says that when David finished speaking, his soul loved him so much that he took off what is so important. Ladies and gentlemen, men, women, if your significant other cannot give you things that cost them, suspect the love. Pastor, you, I came to bring peace, yeah. but I came to bring order. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Ladies, if you cannot give something that cost you, men, if you cannot give something that cost you, be careful. Sit and discuss it. Say, like my friend, lately you've been stingy. <laughs> yes, because remember, you have nowhere to go if you are married already. So you deal with it head, head on. Say, my friend, <laughs> go back. <laughs> I still remember the, the roses and the flowers and the chocolates and the, and the dinners. <laughs> go back. <laughs> Let the Lord speak to you. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes, I, I can't hear the ladies. Amen. Amen. I can't hear the men. Amen. But he gave him his robe, indicating that, you know what? What will make me in my future, I give it to you. What will define me in my future, I give it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you cannot trust a man based on his vision, that is not the one for you. He reveals his future, and he was not afraid to share and this was just friends. He took off his robe and he gave it to him. Amen. Amen. Tonight, as I was praying, the Lord said to me, I'm about to release a new robe over my church. Amen. And I declare over you the robe of honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. The robe of peace. Amen. The garment of prosperity. Amen. The garment of wisdom. The garment of favor. Let it be placed upon you in the name of Jesus. Would you receive that? Receive it in the name of Jesus. Number two, it says that he gave it to David and his, also he gave him his armor. The armor was a form of his protection. He said to me, he said to him, I will be here to protect you when you need me. A man that cannot protect their wife is a dangerous man. This is the reason why if a man can lift their hands, please ladies look at me. If a man can lift their hands and put it on you, that man is more than the devil. Say wow. wow. And if you're a man and you can raise your hands and beat a woman, go and meet my Tyson. Get your match. You go get your own match. That lady God gave you is not your match. Say amen. amen. You're not saying amen. amen. By the way, I'm not only talking about raising your hands. Some of you, you beat women with your mouth. Some of you ladies, you beat men with your mouth. Say wow. wow. You have beaten your husband. They are no longer that bold man that you met. Because you've used words to degrade them. May the Lord help us. Amen. I'm preaching good. Say, so say amen. amen. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm preaching. And I'm not stopping. 
Listen to this. We need to watch how we talk to each other. The Bible says that the netting of the soul between Jonathan and David as friends was because of the conversation that happened between them. Why ask for you anytime you decide to talk, you fight? Do you know what that means? The two of you are proud. If one cannot submit to, the, to, to just being corrected, just being instructed, being that, that the other person can talk and say things to you and you are not angry, you are proud. As that today is heated, yes, it's friends and family, amen. amen. God wants to build powerful families and relationships. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I know some of you are saying, I wish I had brought my husband. The things the Holy Ghost shows you when you are here. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But let's move on because I do not have a lot of time. He, he gave him his armor and he gave him his sword. Now, understand this. The value of this sword was so powerful. In those days, there was only two swords in the whole of Israel. And the sword of Jonathan and the sword of Saul were the only sword in the whole of the land. Because the Bible says that in those days, the Philistines used to oppress the people of God so much that there was no one with any sword in the land. Except Mattox and what they used to do for farming. And the Bible says that Jonathan valued the friendship so much that he said, you know what? I'm willing to sacrifice my life. Here is my sword. For some of you, the relationship you're in, there is no sword in it. The Bible says that the sword is the word of God. And when there is no sword as the center of your relationship, I can assure you, one will choke one another. I can assure you, if the sword is not the deciding factor of how God deals with your home, how God deals with your children, how God deals with your marriage, how God deals with your relationship, you will break down. That is why many of you get back to family devotion. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know you are busy, but don't be busy to gather the family. If it all you can do is once a week, just Saturday morning or Saturday night or Sunday evening, do family devotion. Amen. 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 Because the sword becomes the center of the home and it builds the family. Amen. Amen. And I'm, I'm speaking this to the men. You are the priest of your home. Take that and establish your, your devotion in your home. Say, Wow. I know you are not saying amen, but that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He gave him his bow. The bow was the shield that they used to use. And was an instrument of protection and also for offense. And he gave him his belt. Which was a sign of his stability. That he can trust him. You know, what the belt used to do in those days was that the belt was where they put their credentials and their, uh, any, anything that the accolades that they have received. And the belt was the one that used to hold the whole of the armor that they used to wear together. The Bible says that he gave it to him. Now, remember... This whole thing that is happening, this scene here, had happened before. Do you know that? It had happened before, but this time around, it was the dad giving it to him. Saul wanted to give all these things to David, but Saul had a condition David could not handle. But for Jonathan, it was full of the love. But for Saul, it was a condition. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, if what the man or the woman wants is a conditional relationship, if you give me sex, 
I give you love. If you give me this, I do this. You bring one penny, I bring one penny. You buy pepper, I buy onions. We cook jollof. <laughs> the Nigerian one. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at look at the look at the look at the fight. <laughs> it, 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 it took everyone by surprise. <laughs> but the relationship should be so cordial. And so when Saul gave him all these things, he said, Saul, I cannot taste this because I have not tested it yet. You know why? Because David came from the foundation of pure heart. Oh my God. And he can sense conditional love. Come on, Some people, the only love they can accept is men that abuse them. Do you know I've had meetings with some people and they say, Pastor, as for me, you know, I want, I want them as thugs. If they, not, if they don't abuse or beat me, I don't feel... I say, you are sick. You, you are sick, you are sick, and you are sick. <laughs> you have no idea the things I hear. They need to be, they need to be gangsters. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that be a woman and a man who has built their heart so much that you expect that the one God is sending you, they carry what you carry. Not the conditional love. Not the conditional love that if, if as long as you, you have makeup on, I love you. When you don't have makeup, I don't love you. If, if, if your body is this, then I love you. If your body is not, then I don't love you. Conditional love. By the way, it doesn't mean that men, you must let yourself go. Amen. Everyone is so quiet and... And it doesn't mean that, ladies, you must also let yourself go. This is a very serious real topic today. Pastor, you should preach just the genealogy of Jesus. <laughs> uh, please put my, my, my notes on uh, the type of friends or relationship we must not have or build in our home. Let's see that one. Let's see if we can go through that. I need the main one. And then we will use the God's way as well. So, in relationship building, we have the first one is the liars. The liars. Now, these are relationship that is going to be around you. These are relationship the person you don't want to become. Amen. Amen. And then these are the relationships you don't want to build. <laughs> so who are the liars or the envious? The Bible is speaking in Proverbs 12, 22. God detests and God hates liars. Right. And the devil is the father of all lies. Are you getting what I'm saying? So there are some people because of their unrealistic expectations, they are attracted to liars. Because their expectations are not real. I had a meeting with a, a, a young businessman and he was telling me a story of one person, one of his friends that I know. And the person he married they met and they just said, we like each other. And he said, we like each other. Now, remember, where they met was also interested. <laughs> and they married. Needless to say, the story is so bad that, and I want to share it because sometimes church people, we need to hear this truth. The friend of the friend that married decided to 
go after his wife and slept with the wife. And then did a video to tell him, this is what I did to you. The reason is because of what the two of them were looking for. When the secret or the reason was came is because you looked a certain way, so I thought you had money, but you didn't have the money. So now I went for the one that had the money. And the one that had the money was setting her up. I'm not saying that having money is bad. Having money is really good. Amen. Amen. Yes, money is good. Let me go through it. The second group of friends you don't want is the gossip. Wow. They, they ruin your reputation. They destroy your good name. And they release on your life conflicting facts. It's, it's something that when they talk to you, there's always conflicting facts. You need to pray that Lord protect me from the gossips. Amen. And then you pray that you don't become that. Amen. Amen. You know, there is one prayer I always pray and I always tell Pastor Aaron, You know, when you see something happens to the other side, I always say, Lord, as you're helping them, help me. Because you see, you have what it takes to become. <laughs> you have what it takes and I have what it takes to become. The next one is the victim. The friends that behave like they are always victims. Some of you, you, you have, your best friends are the victims. Or some of you, maybe you may be the one. Now, the Bible does not deny the possibility that we can become victims because things happen to us. Problems come. But when blaming everyone for what has happened in your world is the focus of your life, that's a problem. So you look in through the scriptures and Paul, Joseph, Jesus, all these great men, they were victims of pain. They went through powerful problems. But what it is is that they did not blame the system, their country, their wives, their nation, their friends, everyone but themselves for what is happening to them. The victim mentality. In Genesis 50, 19 to 21, Joseph makes a declaration. He will not stay as a victim. For some of us, if we were the one that went through what Joseph went through, my goodness. CNN, CBC, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere. Did you know what my family did to me? All I did was bring them food. All I did is bring them food. <laughs> pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. What they pay. After all I've done for them. But he said, What you meant for evil? Somebody need to change their mind today. Move from being a victim and become a victor. Because things will happen to you. Things has happened to me. Things will happen to us. It's part of life. But remaining a victim. Some of you, the reason why you've not been promoted in your workplace is you play the victim game. But they are looking for a leader. They are looking for someone that will take charge and do things. And, but you, you always complain. You find reason for everything. Why things must not work. The next one is the manipulators. Say, Wow. Satan is the father of manipulation. He works as an angel of light. Many of us will be manipulated because we did not discern the Holy Ghost. We did not receive wisdom. We did not obey instructions. And so we were manipulated. And you don't want to be in the midst of manipulators. My God. 
is so painful because manipulation makes you feel like you are nothing because they deceive you. It comes from the deception. Judgmentals. We are commanded by the scriptures not to judge, right? And then in Galatians 6 verse 1, we are not to judge in such a way that if any even, even caught in sin, we that are standing, we are supposed to do what? Restore them. It's a very tough thing. But with the love of God and with the scriptures, remember the scripture is to instruct, rebuke, correct. All these to bring restoration. The next one is the arrogant. And I put down them. The arrogant must be removed among us because they never see their error. If you are married to the arrogant, you are in trouble. You are always at fault. Wow. The next one is the emotional. Wow. Now, these are very dangerous people, the emotionals. They are overly expressive, uncontrolled. Wow, look at the, these things were done in, at, at 3 a.m., so forgive the writing, the typing. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so they will be, my guys must, must, must try and correct it. They are, they are what? Uncontrolled emotions. We understand that there are different types of emotions, fear, being sad, being happy, anger, surprise, disgust. These are all emotions that we deal with. But such people, the emotionals, they are overly expressive in these areas. I know you are surprised, but this one is too over. <laughs> I know you are angry, but you get angry too much. The emotions of a man is a strong thing. And when it's not balanced, it can cause you to destroy the relationships God has for you. May the Lord help us. And then the, the, the next one is what? The self-focused. Now, that one is the one who is only, it's only about them. I could have put there the selfish or the self-centered. It's all about them. But we are commanded that to do nothing out of selfish or tyrant motive. People of God, to build powerful relationships, these people will come around us. But how we manage, how we work with them. And then the whole purpose is that we don't become like that. Amen. Because God wants to help us. And whilst he's helping us, he wants us to do well. Amen. Amen. I pray that this day, the Lord will help you. So now, my time is up, but I want you to give me five minutes. Whenever it takes, it comes to relationships. Everyone need what I call a circle. And in the circles, there are things and people and systems and laws God put around you to build strong relationships. If you understand these circles, it will change your life. The first circle that you see or around you is, let's go to the second note. It's people. Amen. People. People. That's the first one. We all need people. We all need people. Now, you cannot be great without people. Amen. I know you are gifted and you are powerful. Let me share this with you because I taught my kids. And so we have some very brilliant people here. So do you know that it is found that children of strict parents, without this one, it doesn't have to be 
uh, children of strict parents are, end up doing well. True or false? It's really good. That's very good. And so we thank God. Say thank you, Jesus. Because some of you, your parents are very strict and we thank the Lord. But I learned something that these children end up becoming liars. <laughs> you know why? Because their parents are a bit strict in helping them, they, now, they learn to lie. So I'm teaching you so you don't become a liar. Amen. 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 But we all need people around us. We need people. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, 9 to 12, I'll deal with that next week. It talks about two are better than one. And it gives us, can we read that scripture please? It will help us. It says two are better than one because they have what? Good reward for their labor. Verse 10. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. For he has no one to help him up. Verse 11. Again, if two lie down together, they, keep, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? <laughs> Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The second one is prejudice. Everyone is surrounded by their own biases and prejudices. You have one and I have one. It is that thing that makes you think a certain way. But if you don't treat others as you want to be treated, you will realize that you will not be able to build strong and powerful relationships. For many of us, what has stopped us from lifting, being lifted, is our prejudices. Because it blocked you from entering a new dimension of life, of promotion, of relationship. We are all have a circle of possibilities. There are opportunities and possibilities around you. Yours is to discover. We all have mighty possibilities. Mighty, great things are around you. If you look, if you open up your eyes, there are problems that are supposed to, possibilities, opportunities that God wants to shift your life. But what happened is that your prejudices does what? It blinds you that you are not able to see your possibilities. And that is what blocks your relationship building. The next one is principles. Paul is a rule that can adopt, that you can adopt to guide your, you in decision making. What principle does is that it's the rule that you have in your spirit. If you have not established principles, I need you to go home and establish principles. It's the rule that you have established. For many of us, it's the scriptural principles. For many of us, it's the family principles. For many of us, it's the cultural principles. But I want you to understand, what you do is that you establish these things so that it guides you in your time. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. The next one is procedures. Procedures. If you don't have certain procedures that helps you to go through things, you will always be caught up doing things anyhow. And in relationship, there must be certain procedures that you have put in place. It is your own personal ones. It governs your home. It governs your career. It governs your health. Policies. It is a plan and a blueprint 
and your strategy, which is based on your proposed actions. Many people think that it's only companies or organizations that must have policies. No. It is your guided strategy. It's your guided plan. Your plans has a guide. And we all have problems. Surrounded us are problems. But in the problems are possibilities. And in the relationship that you build, there will come problems. But many people have been taught that problems, they don't know how to handle problems. Whenever there is problem, they think you hate them because they don't know how to respond to problems. But one of the things the Holy Spirit helps us is the ability to discern how to deal with problems. And because the world is looking for people with strong emotional intelligence, strong wisdom of God, God is raising his church, you and I, to become amazing problem solvers. Because no one is immune. But God is raising us to become powerful problem solvers. And when we become powerful problem solvers, we will change our world. In, the, in every area that you are talking about, we will change our world. The last one is, there is power all around you. There's power. You know, Pastor Irene had a certain meeting yesterday and he had to go meet someone somewhere. And she was telling me this morning, one of the places that she went, one of them had their gods as high as the ceiling. They, because they are building and they are cultivating what? And he said they had all these incense burning and they are feeding these gods with what they need to feed it in order to what? Build their altar. That is why Christians, our prayer life, our purity, our, our word time, our life of honoring God, our service unto God, it builds strong altars and it raises you to a realm of power. So you become a man and a woman of power. He said, behold, I'll give you what? Power. Whilst these people are, are physically building their altars and feeding their gods with incense and food, she said one of them, it, it, she had, the person had tangerine and stuff on it. I said, what a... Uh, yes, guess what? And they reverence these things. But you see, their gods cannot be compared to the power of your God. Amen. Amen. That's why you need to take your walk with God seriously. That's why you need to build power. Power through prayer. Listen, wake up in the morning and pray. Stop this whole lukewarm Christian life. Build your walk with God because there is a contention in the workplace. The person that you are meeting, they spend some hours talking to their physical God that they has no power. But guess what? Spirituality is spiritual. If they believe and they keep feeding that thing, a spirit will enter that thing. A demonic and that thing will back them. But with you, you have the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, build power. Hallelujah. Build power. Build power. Let me tell you something. This whole fight, fight between you and your family because there is no power. The enemy is able to provoke you quickly. But the day you enter a realm of power, the enemy cannot enter your dwelling place. The day you will cause your children to develop power for themselves. Young people hear me. The, the people you are sitting in class with since they were young their parents have been teaching them how to build their gods so you build your walk with God yourself amen, amen. I can't hear you, amen. amen you see if you depend on the God of your parents a time is going to come they will not be there and you will meet certain battles certain problems it will be a battle between gods. 
next week when I tell you the seven people that surrounded David and the lessons in it, you will realize one of them was a Goliath and the Goliath comes with a powerful problem it's a giant problem but behind the problem of Goliath is a God and that God is what pushes Goliath to become the champion of the Philistine and so when you stand before Goliath where you are fighting it's not just Goliath Elisonia. you are fighting the God that fights for Goliath but if you come with spears and javelin you cannot meet them that is why for 40 days and 40 nights they were all hiding in caves until a young man stood up and came and he said you come to me with spears and javelin but I come to you in the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run to it and they are safe ladies and gentlemen at that moment age meant nothing at that moment what was talking was power Somebody shout power. Power. Shout power. power. Shout power. Shout power. Thank you for watching Hope Today with Dr. George Ansa. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider partnering with Dr. Ansa and Faith International Church to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. To give a love offering, please go to www.faithinternational.ca. For prayer support or testimony, please email us at info at faithinternational.ca.